Hello everyone, welcome to One Soccer. I'm a One Soccer analyst, Jordan Wilson, and today I'm with a good friend, lifetime friend, <laughs> Jelani Smith. Um, welcome him, welcome. Thank you, brother. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for having me, it's a pleasure. You know, we just had a, being that it's Black History Month, we just had to have certain talks, uh, and there's a person that I, I just couldn't have really these type of talks with any and anyone. Like you're very intellectual, but also just like dating back to how we grew up together, um, seeing different things. Like it's just a nice little therapy session that we're, we're definitely, definitely getting into today. But um, tell me a bit about where you played and then just like your role now with Forge FC. I mean, obviously growing up um, locally, Aaron Mills, um, that was my, uh, my longest tenure club, I'd say. Yeah. Um, going over to school, Florida Gulf Coast University, um, playing there for four seasons and having success there and having the opportunity to go over to Europe. Um, bounced around Europe, Holland, Austria, uh, Slovakia, Germany, Spain. Jeez. And then uh, <laughs> ultimately landing back here with, uh, with, with Coach Bobby at, uh, at Sigma for two years in League One. Yeah. And after that, kind of made the decision to... Uh, to hang him up, we'll say, and uh, become a manager. Love it. Um, one thing we need to note, and I think I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about, is U14, 2005, Aaron Mills Soccer Club. Where's the camera? <laughs> Aaron Mills Soccer Club, okay? We go to, everyone's like, oh, we won Ontario Cup, but did you win Nationals? Moncton. We were in Moncton, New Brunswick. Moncton, New I couldn't even say Moncton yes. those times. Moncton. Yes. And we won Nationals. Um, I remember my dad being there. Jelani and I shared a room. This was my roommate. This is like going way back uh, to win a national championship with my brother. It's like, you think at that time <laughs> that you're going to win many more or like, oh, it's just like the beginning, but literally the one national championship I won was with you uh, and Aaron Mills. Shout out to the Eagles back in the day. That was a, um, uh, a legendary team. And, it, and this is what footy does, man. It brings people together. It also has platforms now that like we can both speak. I think too, like we both talk about the immense pride that we have, like me going into this type of industry um, with the skin that we both have, and then you just being front office. Like, tell me more about your exact role with Forge FC. Uh, you're you're a jack of all trades, right? I think it's uh, you you manage a lot. You manage player personnel. You're managing registration, ITCs in Canada, Connect. Um, you're managing travel, logistics. So you're, you're encompassing a, a lot of uh, responsibilities in, in, in one person, right? But I think uh, most important job is kind of being a conduit between the players and the staff, right? So you're kind of that link with anything that's going on with the, with the club or with the staff. You're kind of that transition person to, in, in, exactly. in, in between. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Um, I remember texting you uh, saying that we're proud of you. Just... Um, I think we know what that means, but I think also just to just expand, expand a little bit on that, like maybe how it felt or immediately where your mind went, like when that text was set. I think you hit it right when you said we understand what that means and we meaning people of our color, our skin tone, right? Because we spoke before, I said, when we're in an opportunity like this to be in the platform that you have or I have, it's, it's a responsibility. But to our counterparts, it's a job. Yeah. Right? So that well that that we means we all are proud of you because it means that when you're in that moment, you're just I'm more than Jelani. I'm I'm more than you're more than Jordan. It's uh you encompass and embody all of us in that moment. So it's uh it's not a burden or a pressure, but you but you feel it. Yeah. Right? Cause you know that I don't have the luxury of of making a mistake or an error or having a lapse in judgment because that may ruin the opportunity for the next Jordan or the next me, right? So you, you, you carry that as a black man, you carry that as a black woman, you carry that as a person of color. Well said. I think it's, it's beautiful to, to hear you say that and just put it eloquently because it's, or simply as well, because I think for people it's like, I feel that. You know, I feel that pride. Yeah, obviously, everyone is representing their family or the people that they love. But, like, there's also something else added when you're just, like, you're looking at us as kids. I had, like, my dad coached us. There were a few black coaches around. But, like, professional black coaches, didn't really see many of them. People in the front office like yourself with a squad, 
didn't see many of them. Um, so now it's kind of like breaking, I'll say like curses in terms of, hey, this, this wasn't in place before, but now it's in place now. Um, yeah, it is a little bit of a pressure, but I think it's also beautiful because it's like moving in a different direction. Although we'll get into it later in this, this show, like racism is still alive, but it's nice to see that like um, black people and, and you know, people in their own right are just making steps. I think that's, we need more of that open communication, but just like breaking down walls. Um, so that's why I said like, we're proud of you because I can speak on behalf of us, like as a people. Um, I still want you to do great work. Obviously, when you came to the studio today, I still like rough you up and hit you, even though you're <laughs> twice my size. It's all love, and when Forge wins, I'm not amped. But like, I'm happy to see you do what you do because it's not really about us. It's about the people before us and the people that are coming up. This eight-year-old kid or anyone looking to be in a managerial role, they're like, hey, there's so many people that are like, yo, I want to be a football player. But like, how many people think beyond? soccer or like what happens after and and my brother would always say to me like you're going to be out of football longer than you're in it he would always say this and I was like yeah you know I want to play professionally and he's like yeah but what happens after and and for you to be doing this and and to see yourself in the front office role we're working with Bobby and honestly a establishment and a team that is getting it right uh in terms of bringing in local talents and just always being competitive um, I'm so happy for you I'm so so proud of you um, I spoke this week to Palma Duka. That served a bit as therapy as well, just like him being an older brother in the game, um, being assistant coach for, for Charlotte FC and was a previous head coach for Pacific FC and the CPL. And it was nice to hear him publicly say things that we all know, but like we feel. Um, specifically, I want to talk about how do you feel about management? Like you are one of many, one of very few faces mm -hmm. um, in management roles. Like, why do you feel that there aren't so many and how could that change? Or how do you feel like that should be different? Um, lack of opportunity, right? When you, when you look at the, the executives and leadership positions in, in the soccer clubs or even in sports in general, or transcending sports, just in business. Yeah. There's not too many faces. It's not because we're not talented enough. It's not because we're not verbose enough or structured enough. It's just just lack of opportunity. Yeah. Right. When I and when I say that, I say. I think, Roy Keane. I think, Steven Gerrard. I think uh, Michael Arteta. I think uh, Frank Lampard. Right. Those are all coaches in the EPL that got opportunities. That would have been their first clubs or second clubs. Mm. Right. Then I think of Henri. I think of Clarence Seedorf. Right, I think of uh, Patrick, Patrick Vieira, Vieira, right, who didn't have the opportunity to have that initial club be it a, an EPL team. Yeah, right? and it's not for lack of talent because you saw what Patty did over at uh, at NYCFC over here. Yeah, but it's just having the chance to be in that room uh, to prove yourself. Yeah, right, and it's it's not that. It's not for lack of talent or quality. It's just that you're, you hire people look like you, right? So I'm fortunate working at Forge right now. I had Bobby and Costa and Scott and Matt and Nicole who believe in me and give me opportunities for, for, for upward mobility within the club, right? But if I don't have that, so there's a, if there's a face that looks like me, I'd hire him. Yeah. Right? But we don't have opportunity because there's not people that look like us in positions of power to hire us in those roles. Do you, do you think it like it has to do with like comfortability as well, or do you think it's like a default to like to go with your own, so to speak? Like I'll put air quotes on that, but like if you're Greek, like you're you're more inclined to maybe trust or be comfortable with someone who's Greek or shares your heritage. Do you think that has something to do with it? Like in your own personal experience, I would say. I think, I think naturally, it's a comfort thing. Right, and if you're gonna build a backroom staff, you're building a management staff for executives. You want to build people you trust. Yeah. Right. It's not for saying it's a a, a race issue, but oftentimes, like I said, I'm building that club. I'm I'm gonna bring my guys in, and if my guys have to look like me, that's just a a circumstance that happens to be. Yeah. But but ultimately, for me, I don't I don't I don't think you get to establish that it's a for sure that it's a, a a race thing. You bring people that you trust. You bring people that you have to be familiar and in common with, and that's the issue, is yeah. that 
again, I can't reiterate enough, we don't have people in positions of, of power and influence that can open that door, mm -hmm. right? I'm a, I'll knock always, but you need someone there to open it for you on the other side sometimes give you that proverbial push. Because yeah. there's, there's so many barriers. Yeah. And when we talk about racism, racism is uh, that affects people is, is, is oppression. Yeah. But it's stemic. Because it's stuff you can't see. It's, it's, those, it's those barriers. It's, just, it's, that, it's that red tape. It's, yeah. those, it's those borders that are they're not tangible. They're not visible. Right? And that it makes it difficult. For sure. It makes it difficult. Because you're, you're in those rooms right now. And in, to me, I'm, I'm numb to it by now. Yeah. This is my fifth year at Forge. I'm numb to it. But it's, it's uncomfortable being the only person of color in the room. Yeah. Always. It's, it's uncomfortable being the only person that... That this that looks like this. Yeah. Right? And when I say it looks like this, I mean I'm 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 black. Um and it, it must be myself. Yeah. But it doesn't matter where you put me. Like you can put me in in Austria and in Florida and in Germany and Central America, I'm, I'm gonna be myself. For sure. As you should. I think too, like <laughs> you hit the nail on the head, like in terms of racism, like if you go certain places, like racism is very in the air, like it's opaque, like it's thick. Mm -hmm. I think too, like in Canada and people at home, look, I am, I'm a, a person that likes to look at things like the glass is half full. However, you got to call a spade a spade. People look at racism and, and feel as if like, like it's dead, like, yo, it's, it's live, it's tangible and like it's, it lives. Maybe it might not be as thick here in Canada as like other places, but like it lives. I'll say too, like we talked about just like chopping it up and, and and just connecting and being friends, like about the subtleties of it, right? And just like these little like microaggressions that may happen that honestly I'm guilty of like let, allowing them to happen and never really speaking up about it. Um, specifically at my time in Denmark, because it would happen so frequently that I almost just like let it slide because I was like, yo, it's more of a challenge to like speak about it and to always like have my fist up and like to be fighting against like people saying certain comments or just like, um, the type of oppression you might feel. So it was almost like I would pick my moments where I really wanted to get the point across, but it's almost like you shouldn't even be that. Like we should be so much further ahead in terms of people not making certain comments or in sport, like throwing bananas or making monkey noise. Like this is something that like is communal. I could talk to many players and in some way, shape or form, they've been racially abused by playing or while they've been playing. And it's something that's just like living and, and, and continues to happen. And like, I'm thinking, hey, in 10, 15, 20 years or five years, is this like going to be addressed? Is this, will this be obliterated? And like, these are questions where like, when I really think about it, it's daunting because I'm just like, I don't see how it's really going to change. Like it's gotten better, but like, I don't see how it's really, really changing. Someone in those positions has to care. Right, we we understand what it is. Like you said, it's, it's communal. We, I I know you're a struggle, and it's it's funny you mentioned Europe because like uh, I go shock my teammates, and when you see another black man or another person, you, it's a head nod. Mm. It's like I do this all the time. Do you know them? Yeah. Do you know them? Nah, but for us, it's understanding that head nod means I see you. Yeah, that means I I get it. It means I I understand. Right in that in that passing, it's almost a serenity in that moment because yeah. like I don't I don't know this person, from, from, <laughs> I don't know him at all. Yeah, but I understand, understand what they go through every day. You hit like, the nail on the head by saying like I see you because like being seen and understanding and, the struggle is like half the battle. Because I'll tell you, I'll speak on behalf of black people right now. I'm, I'm not trying to get into the struggle all the time. I'm not trying to talk about where we've come from and injustices that happen. Like I want to get on with my life and move forward. Mm. But I'm almost like remiss if you make it to a certain platform or you have an ability where me and you right now could speak and people could play it and listen and not talk about issues. And like, I try to do it in a way that where I think Black History Month is great, but like I'm black 365, like till I die, I'll be black. Yep. I was born black. Like there are things that like I've experienced that like I will speak about. Some are positive, some are negative, but like I would be remiss if I didn't like speak about those experiences. So I think being seen is what everyone wants to be at the end of the day. My fiance is gonna kill me, but she always says like, I make sure you always see me. She always says this. <laughs> and, like, I, and I'm like, you know, it's true. Cause sometimes you're living with someone, you just like, you, they pass you by. Mm -hmm. 
you glimpse at them, but like being seen, being understood, like that's like a like a human trait. Like we all want that. And I think when you said it to me the other day on the phone, I was just like, yo, that's that's dope. That's a nice way of like putting it, like moving forward. Yes, yeah, it's, it's the opportunity for visibility. Yeah. Right. And it's we, we don't get that all the time. And like you said, you, it's, to, it's, to, it's to be seen, it's to be, to be, I want to feel a part of it. Yeah. Right? We're, I'm, not, I'm not another cog in the wheel. We're, we're, we have, and the thing, we're, we're, we're spiritual, we're, we're spiritual people. Yeah. You know, we're, we're, we're joyous, we're jovial. Like you said, the early shit we have, it's been 14 plus years like this. Yeah. Sorry, geez, 18 years now, isn't it? 32. Bro, aged us, Christ, bro. I know. 14 sounded good. You said, I know, you I said did. It, it is, man. I, for, I forgot about that. Christ, I was feeling like I was 20 oh, years leave, Christ, man. Was, Trust me. Yeah, man. But it's, it's just, it's just the, the, the casual moments that happen every day. Yeah. That no one, it goes unnoticed, but we feel it. It's For like, sure, and you, it's it's difficult to hide the emotions sometimes. Absolutely, right? Because like, you you want to be able to be to be vulnerable in those times. You want to be able to be to be uh, to be soft, but you can't. Like you, the opportunity is not there. I'm I don't I'm not strong because I want to be. I'm strong because I have to be. Yeah, it's a necessity. Because the the moment I let my guard down, there it is again. Yeah, like a slap in the face, and For it, sure. it's. It's it's repetitive and it's unrelenting. And I think if people understand the the stories that that we go through every day, it'd be more eye opening. Yeah. Right. Because you said, yo, Black Mystery Month is a, is a moment. For sure. We're black. This is the color I've been my entire life. Yeah. And I uh, I think about like my parents all the time, and from their perspective, because having to be raised and raise a black man or raise a black child, young black boy nowadays, it's I almost, I give them so much, so much of me today, and I, I'm not an emotional guy, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it, they mean so much. Yeah. Because I don't know what I do having a child. You have a, you have a, you have a, a, a child now, but I, I wouldn't know what to do in those moments. So I have to say, hey, explain my five year old why it's like this. Yeah. It takes a lot of courage, right? And having to look me in the eye and say. This is why you can't go to Frankie's house for dinner. Yeah. I don't see color when I'm six. That's just my, sure. that's just Frankie. We run the park. We, we play at school. We play at recess. Yeah. But well, why can't I be invited over there? Trust me. And the sit downs as well, like little things. I remember my dad, like one thing that sticks out to me right now, just going to any shop, whatever like shop, like I'm a, like I'm a Brit, any store, whatever it was, like convenience store. Like he's like, take off your hat take off your hoodie, like, right away. And I was always just like, well, he didn't. Mm -hmm. Like, Johnny didn't take off his hat or his hoodie or mm -hmm. whatever. And he's like, you're not Johnny. He said, take... And, like, that was... I'm, like, I'm honestly, Dad, wherever you are right now, like, that was great because he didn't address the issue why. Mm -hmm. He just told me, don't do that. This is not what you should do. Or just little things. And, like... As I got older and I got a bit wiser and I'm I'm more in tune with certain things, I'm like, oh, well, that's the reason. Like, it's just hiding there, like, in plain sight. And when you really think about it, it's like, yeah, anyone could go steal something. Anyone could. Yeah. Like, and I'm guilty of it. Like, I've, I've stolen a little candy. Like, everyone's had that moment of, like, oh, you do something. But immediately, have there been eyes on you as soon as you entered a certain place? Have you been viewed the same way? So I say all this to say is about the biases that we have. And like this is important for me to like continue to preach and I'll preach it till the day I die is about keeping your biases in check. I have bias about certain things as well. I think it's open to, I think I become a better human being by being open to che checking those biases and also really digging deep why I have them about anything. But specifically when this month I'm like, check your bias at home, check your bias. If you're, if you're thinking, why am I crossing the street when this person's walking by me? Like, check your bias. Like, why is that the reason? You know, because you could just be like, oh, your first impulse would be like, oh, well, I'm not racist. But what about the subtleties and the little nuances and all the day-to-day -day activity that you might treat or act or oppress people in different ways and you might not know it? Doesn't mean that you're a person that should go to hell or like you're the worst person in the world. Check your bias, because I think that's just like how we get to a point where everyone feels seen and everyone feels comfortable is like checking your bias. And I keep saying this is because that's a goal of mine, but I also feel like we'll be a better place 
as a society, as a country, as a whole, if you actually just check your bias. Um, you, when we were talking, you talked about woke versus awareness or woke and awareness. Like, I'll just give you the floor right now to kind of dive in wherever you want to go with that. When we discuss things that are near and dear or a part of the black community, there always seems to be these coined phrases, right? So when people think about uh, about, about us, we use the word woke, mm. right? But if you look at the, the LGBTQ community, it's awareness, right? So I, I think it kind of diminishes the the purpose and the and the tone of the conversation by yeah. right? oh he's oh she's woke you're saying it like in a way it's marginalizing it, it. exactly oh oh they're, they're woke no they're they're not woke they're they're aware right because they they can relate they've educated themselves they've they've researched so they they know that i wear my do-rag it's not a sign of me being a, a criminal or a thug they're wearing that because i guess got my hair done or got a new a, a retwist or whatever and be set right just be set right? <laughs> so, so, so your so your waves can catch yeah for sure it's so it's when you go to a uh, a caribbean or a jamaican restaurant and they if they ask you for uh you want jerk ots tail gravy that's awareness right and it's those little it's those little moments but people they they cheat it by saying the word woke it's 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 awareness, so I want to like I want to direct that conversation away from the word woke because it, again, it marginalizes and, and it diminishes the meaning of it, in terms of the perspective of, the, of, of our of our culture. Beautifully said. I'm I'm guilty of like, I say the word woke and I will catch myself sometimes because I'm just like, am I just getting caught up in the hype? You know? Because again, it's like that that racism is just like living in the balance. Mm -hmm. I don't wake up in the morning. I don't come out of my bed and I'm like ah, oh, there's racist people out there today. Like, that's not what I think about. You have your own stuff to deal with, right? Yeah. It's just like living in the balance. And I think months like this, obviously, because there's a month dedicated and you're like forced or maybe drawn to, to talk about issues. But again, it's something that like, as you said, like awareness, you can always be aware. You can always dive deeper into that. You can always, again, check your bias or see ways of like improving society or yourself or just your relationships, mm -hmm. right? Or... The next time you see someone, you have something to say. Maybe it's not asking them in a way like, hey, can I fix, can this person fix your problem? Maybe it's just like investing in someone or diving in. And this is just something that happens where it connects more people, right? I think the issue I had, like, especially when I was in, in Denmark playing for like five and a half, six years, I ended up being a spokesperson for black people. Like everything black, I had to answer. Mm -hmm. I was just like, I'm Jordan. Yeah, I'm black, but like, like, I had to answer every and any question. It seemed like, oh, well, let, let me ask you this. Or you might like this type of music. Who knows? I could have, like, like, 70s rock. Like, who knows, right? It's just, like, put it, or pigeonhole or putting people in a certain box is so detrimental. And it's just, like, trying to break free of that. And I think my biggest regret is not speaking up more frequently. But like I said, that ended up being, like, a survival tactic of not taking things on. But if I had one regret in my life is, like, more of those times speaking up and just trying to like unite or just like put things to bed. But you're gonna say something. I saw a thought come to you. Cause I, I was in the circle back to when you said the the talk with your dad saying you're you're not you're not Johnny. Mm. Right? Cause how many of us have those conversations with our parents at any point in time? Yeah. Right? I remember my uh my mom, my dad made sure um my hair was cut short. Whenever I, whenever I go on trial, whenever I go away, go abroad, your hair is cut short, lit clean. Right, it's not because they're concerned about my appearance. They're concerned about the perception of me. Yeah. Right, and this is this is me now for a reason. Because I, I I'm comfortable enough in my in my own skin to say, hey, to the next kid who's 12 to 13, eight years old, you can wear your hair like this, and be in my position. Yeah. You can you can wear your earrings and your jewelry and be in this position. You don't have to negate or take away from the things that made you innately you, right? Because this is, this is part of who I am. My hair is part of who I am. My color is part of who I am. The, the jewelry I wear is, is part of who I am in essence, yeah. right? And th th those moments mean a lot. It's powerful, though. 
they mean a lot. They mean a, they mean more than than anyone can know to be able to have the opportunity to share this platform with you right now, even right to have these conversations for people to be to be aware, not not woke, to be educated on on black black culture, educated on the struggle that we go through in society in the boardroom, on and off the field, and opportunities. It it means a lot. Yeah. It's like each one teach one, right? If you could connect with someone else when they go to the party or when they're with their friends, maybe something said or a comment is just kind of made under their their (laughs) mouth a little bit. It's like that connection with you is that time for that person to go out and nullify it, dead it right there. Mm. And, And that's the beauty of it. So... I'll still get at you for your twist if they're not right, but I love that you're wearing your hair out and you're doing your thing and you're coming with your bling. Yo, forever and always, to the day I die, we're always going to have, I have so much love for you, but we're always going to have that big brother, little brother relationship. I'll be the little brother just because obviously you're 6'3". Not six truly, three. man. Like 6'4", get a straight. 6'4", he said. <laughs> ah, big boy. Okay. No, um, as we're like wrapping up or nearing towards the end, um, just talk to me about personal heroes, like a black hero, like anyone or anything that comes to mind and you want to just, you want to say and get off your chest? I go heroes immediately, mom and dad. Love that. I, the, the opportunities, the environment that they raised my brother and myself and my sister in, they, there's nothing I don't owe them. Nothing. I, everything that I am, everything that I can be in this role, that would have them. Yeah. So my my mom and my dad are immediately my heroes because they gave me the the courage and the strength to 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 be out in this world every day. Yeah. But they also provided the opportunities and gave me the the will to say, "Hey, you can go out and be this. Love it. You're not just an athlete. You can go and be that too." Or you can be an athlete, but also look around the corner because there's there's more than that. And like you said, this your opportunity to play football is yay big, right? You're the rest of life now. You're 30, 31, 32. You're 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 a kid in the executive world, yeah. just like I am, right? But while you're playing football, you're so you're so caught up in those in those moments of just being a, a, as the wheel keeps turning. Yeah, you don't think about life beyond football. I think that was a catalyst for me actually going into management. So I said, hey, I could play football for another three or four years, but then what? Right yeah. right now I have a five-year head start anyone else that's, uh, that's retiring. Yeah. Right? Um, so uh, for sure my mom, my dad are my heroes. And then I just say, uh, Masai, man. Yeah. Have to. Perfect guy to look up to. Have to. He's right down the street when you, when you, when you think about it, and he's probably in charge of one of the most visible sports brands in Canada yeah. globally. Right, so it'd be it'd be incredible to to sit down and hear what he has to say because he has probably a, just a plethora of knowledge. And mm. again, it's that there's that commonality because not only is he an executive, but he's a black executive. Well, let's get him on the show next right? year. <laughs> hey, hey, there it is. Reach out. <laughs> That's not simple. <laughs> there, there, huh? there it is. Huh? Dream big. There it is. But he's a he's a definitely definitely a hero and an, an inspiration because you you see that he's still so much of himself. Yeah. Right, you you watch him. You tell he has that that swagger and that kind of that kind of, you know. Yeah. That that makes us special. That For makes sure. us unique. So I think uh, my size is definitely someone I have up there. For sure, I think um, I don't want to be a copycat, but I definitely have to talk about my parents quickly. Uh, my mom turned sixty five in the summer, and at her work surprise dinner party, I said, and I thought this was eloquent and like perfect because it summed up everything that like my mom is. Um, I was like, she did so much with so little. Like, that's how I look at it. Like, just being an immigrant to this country and, like, just having the drive to, like, get her degree, just put her family first, drive. Like, she has to drive, like, 45, 50 minutes every day to work. To work. She's an early childhood educator. She's just, like, with kids all day, comes home and, like, didn't really take that home with her. She was just always there for us. And then my dad, just, like, being, like, my biggest advocate my whole entire life. Um, Always pushing me, always supporting me. I think for me now too, like whatever I do, whatever position I'm in in life, like I carry them with us. And that's like something that you attested your parents to. And I know like for me sitting here as well, it's just like I I carry that pride and that immense, like it was a pleasure growing up the way I did and just having the parents that we had like backing us. 
Um, Jay, I just want to thank you for coming on today. I thank you for being vulnerable and having those conversations because I know that's a big thing as well. Me and you could just talk and kick it and crack jokes and there's so much things we could talk about or so many things we could talk about. But um, talking about these things, I think is important. And I think it's also just to have discussions. So wherever you are and you're watching this, it's to have that discussions, whether it be with your partners, friends, that person you've been meaning to talk to, or just little things that you might see on the street. It's just like each one teach one. Like little bit, bit by bit, we can just kind of knock things off and become a bit closer and just check our bias and not have, uh, not have it roaming around and, and defeating us. For sure. So I appreciate you, brother. I appreciate the opportunity, man. It's, it's, it's a pleasure. And let me say before we end, I'm 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 proud of you. So I, I, owe I love that, that. I owe that back to you, man. It's, no, I appreciate it's, you, man. It's, it's, it's amazing seeing what you've done in the game of football and retiring, having the opportunity to be here. So from 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 me to you, from not just black man to black man, but for one of my one of my brothers, man, we're well, we're proud of you again. Appreciate you, brother. Man, put the we're in there. All right, <laughs> full circle moment. Thank you guys for listening. <laughs>